In just less than two weeks, the internet has gone from being a full-on stan of Gypsy Rose Blanchard to now they're trying to cancel her. And we're gonna be talking about all of that in today's video. But if you happen to miss my last one, I did a video going over the full docu-series with all the bombshell jaw-dropping moments that aired on Lifetime called The Prison Confessions of Gypsy Rose Blanchard. If you missed that video, I'll have it linked down below. But today we're gonna be talking about how the internet has totally flipped on where they stand with her. And I'm gonna be talking more about my opinion. Now, before we get into this video, if you would like to join and become a member of my channel or check out my Patreon content, I post videos over there that are too disturbing to post publicly and they're long, like 30 plus minutes. Come on, it's some good stuff. I also have a podcast tier where you can watch me talk about all sorts of things in my podcast that I post weekly. I've talked about Gypsy Rose over there, so if you would like to check that out. I also have an uncensored video over there about the docuseries that came out on Lifetime. So if you would like to check out my members content, definitely join and become a member and it helps me out so much or join Patreon members. Same content on both platforms. It's just some people want to be on YouTube members and some people want to join Patreon. Either way I am so appreciative of if you do but let's go ahead and get into this video can't bring me down I'm on a high right now I'm living my best life and y'all can't take that from me and the D is I definitely think when you watch these videos, making jokes and stuff, it, it kind of makes you forget why we know who Gypsy Rose Blanchard is because the actual reality of it is so disturbing. But now we're like, whoa, the day is fire, making jokes about it and stuff. Am I the only one that's just a little bit confused? <laughs> but when I see things like this, I'm just kind of like, what is going on? Sorry, I just seen one of the miserable bitches that exist on Twitter tweet. Why is everyone talking about Gypsy Rose right now? Like, I get being happy for her, but y'all is being weird at this point. She went to jail because she murdered her murderer. They made movies and TV shows about her life. No check. And then she finally gets out of the prison industrial complex and we not finna do a backflip for her for the one time? Are you the devil? Can you not see a community being made for the communalists? You understand? Let us have some fun. Damn. And then y'all wonder why people kill themselves. Because of like you taking the fun out of everything. Shit. Anyways, Gypsy Rose, we so happy you out. Gypsy Rose is absolutely a fraud. And I have proof. Roll the clip. I don't associate myself as a murderer because... If you think about it, yes, I had a part to play in it. I requested, I asked you, Nick for help. And how that all conversation started was, you know, he was saying that he would protect me from anyone. I said, anyone. He said, yes. I said, even my mother. He said, yes. And then the, the plan kind of formed from there. But he's the one that did the actual kill, not me. I can't kill anyone. That's why he's in trouble to begin with, because he's the one that did it. So when they say I'm a murderer, I don't identify as that. What are your thoughts? She shows how much of a narcissist she is. She says she's taking accountability, but she puts this out on the media. I am telling you, after seeing this interview, I already thought she was kind of sort of not be 100% honest, but I really think she's a fraud now and I think she'd re-offend. That's just my thoughts. I feel like that thing that she said is a little bit like, because in the docuseries, she talks about how she shot a gun that ended up being a BB gun at her mom, but she didn't know that it was when she initially pulled the trigger. So when her saying she's not capable of murdering, doesn't that kind of a dishonest statement because she did pulled the trigger on her mom before. And then there's also that clip, which we talked about in my last video that they showed in the trial where she was walking around showing a layout of the house so that Nick could get into, you know, off her mom. And when she walked over to the bed where her mom would be sleeping, she motioned like this, like a stabbing motion. My mom was in prison with Gypsy Rose and I made a video about two years ago, basically interviewing my mom, asking her questions about like, 
how she thought, how, what were her first impressions of Gypsy Rose and everything like that. And that video is getting a lot of traction right now. First of all, we live in Missouri and my mom was in Vandalia prison. Gypsy Rose was in Chillicothe, but because in Missouri there are only two women's prisons, it just seems like everyone filters through Vandalia and some get moved over to Chillicothe and some don't. My mom never moved over to Chillicothe, but Gypsy did shortly after going through Vandalia. And this is all real. This is all true. Like, I don't know why I would be making this up. You can go look at a video, the video from two years ago because so many people were like, that's Chillicothe, Texas. You're not talking about... Guys, yes. <laughs> now, regardless of all of that, my mom said that she thought Gypsy was lame. And I'm not paraphrasing, those were her exact words, and you might be on the other end of the spectrum. And honestly, no one is saying it, so I'm just gonna say it. I do not think that we should be giving Gypsy Rose as much attention as we are by paying attention to her as much as we are. Now, I am not a judge, so I don't personally have enough education to decide if she is fully like reformed or if she did the time that she should have done. I don't think that her legal system is like the best, but I know where my abilities lie and in the justice system, I'm out, you know? But I've noticed some other people feel the same way as me where like, I don't really know if she should even be out, but it, she is, so I hope that she's reformed, I hope that she's learned, I hope that she has grown, but there are some things that I have seen that have just concerned me. And it's also totally fine if your opinion differentiates from mine, I just genuinely don't see anyone else talking about this side of it, like, and how they feel on the other side, because it just gives me a really off-putting feeling in my stomach. My mom wasn't just in there with Gypsy, you know, she was in there with Alyssa Busamonte and Diane Staudet as well. I prison's prison and there's only two in Missouri so of course all the most infamous notorious women serial killers are going to end up in the same prison when it comes to Gypsy's story I understand like that Munchausen by proxy is a thing and that she was poorly horrifically mistreated and I genuinely have so much self-awareness and one of the most empathetic people I know on this planet with that being said is murder one of those mistakes that we forgive is someone ending someone else's life something that someone can come back from? In all regards, in all aspects, because if so, there's a lot of other cases we need to be looking at. Another thing, I had a horrible childhood and I'm not going to sit here and tell you guys all about it. I've been through a lot at the hands of my mother and at no point ever in any of those circumstances and situations, even the time we got kidnapped, did I think, my mother's life needs to end. And they talk about how sheltered she was and how she didn't know anything of the outside life. Then how did she know how serious murder was? How did she know that what would get her mother to stop was murder? I have a lot of questions and seeing this newlywed game with her and her husband is not answering my questions and it just feels inappropriate to me. Does anyone else feel, like I just, it feels not right to me. It feels strange, it feels weird. Um, I don't know. I don't know because no matter what I've been through and I just feel like something evil has to live within the depths of your soul to ever consider that period point blank end of story and I don't think it's funny that she's sassy definitely think that it is fair um to say and I've kind of felt the same way that you have to have like like you have to be disturbed to to do what she did I think that that goes without saying though I feel like if anybody thinks you don't have to be I don't know if they're really using the thinking part of their brain because I don't feel like you just do something like this if you don't have something you know dark within you also with that being said like we don't know what it was like living with her mom and I feel like to be in the situation that Gypsy was in you are going to have some struggles and thoughts and stuff that we cannot even comprehend or understand because we didn't, you know, grow up in a home like that with a mother like that. And we don't really know. She truly did feel like she had no other way out. All we do know is that even if, that was the case and she truly did feel like she had no other way out of the situation that there are some things that are just next level disturbing like that video that I keep talking about that was just something that you don't just do, you know, and there were so many instances that she could have backed out or changed her mind or, you know, there's so many steps she had to take to get it to where Nick actually 
offed her mom. Also, she shot a gun at her mom before. I mean, there is just a lot of things where it's like, I'm sorry, I'm not saying that I think Gypsy is this bad person today and that she's gonna hurt anybody today, but I do think that what happened is not normal. That also does not mean that I'm not saying that what she went through wasn't horrible because it is and I do feel so terrible for her about that but I think that this girl made a really good point about how there are a lot of people who have gone through really terrible things with their parents but they don't plot their murder. Yes, Gypsy Rose Blanchard is a bad person. I do not understand why this woman is being so universally praised now that she's gotten out of prison for orchestrating the murder of her mother. Um, and for those of you guys who don't know, uh, she was a victim of a really bad case of Munchausen syndrome by proxy where her mom would literally uh, fake her having illnesses to the point where she was physically debilitated up until her 20s, thinking that she was still a child, so acting like a child. And she met someone on Facebook and the two of them conspired to get rid of her mom and uh, Gypsy Rose Blanchard just got out um, a couple of days ago and the boyfriend that actually did the, is locked up for life. And I don't understand why people can't see through the fact that while yes, uh, she was the victim of a terrible crime, this is still a master manipulator. This is still someone that conspired to kill a member of their own family and now she's being glorified for it and even worse, made it rich by it. I do think that it is bizarre, this whole mentality of glorifying her and lifting her up and turning her into this celebrity and you know, the people who are like standing her or all the TikToks I've seen or videos and tweets I've seen of people People and the jokes that they've made in support of her, like it is a bit off-putting. The clip I've seen of Gypsy on the Nick Vile podcast that has been currently going viral, which has flipped a lot of people's opinion on her, where she was talking about how she's not the one who actually who did the actual, you know what I mean? Um, I think that that clip is very interesting because Charles Manson didn't kill anybody either but it didn't change the fact that he was a very disturbed man who hurt lots of people. Now, the difference between that and this is that Gypsy was in a very traumatic environment with a lot of abuse, a lot of trauma, and uh, she was a victim of Munchausen by proxy. And with that being said, I don't think that you have to be the person who actually, you know, commits the murder to be disturbed. She talks about how she got convicted of second degree murder because in the state of Missouri, there is no accessory to murder charge and that that's what she would have gotten. I feel like she was smarter than what people thought that she was. I feel like she truly thought that because she wasn't the one who actually committed it, that she would get an accessory to murder charge and that she wouldn't have gotten in as much trouble as she did. That's just my personal opinion. Hey everybody, so we are in Times Square. Look at this. Isn't this epic? Oh my God, I'm so enjoying my time right now. Um, we're just walking Times Square and doing a little shopping. I bought an I Love New York t-shirt, which was on my bucket list, so that was pretty awesome. Okay, stay tuned for more, bye. Does anybody else feel like it's so wild to see these videos of Gypsy and how like, open she's been on social media and how much she's been posting it's like really bizarre to see videos and pictures and stuff like this when you know the full story it's wild like i didn't don't know what i was expecting when she got out of prison but i don't think that it was this she can do whatever she wants on her social media like listen whether you think that she is an awful person or not at the end of the day she did her time okay she served her time. She has the right to live her life as a free woman. So she gets to live her life now. She gets to be free and whatever your opinion on her is, she still, she served her time. She is a free woman now, regardless of what side you stand on. But it is still so bizarre because I thought she was gonna come out of prison and like have no idea how to use social media. I thought because she was in prison for so long that she would be overwhelmed by it. I wasn't expecting that she was gonna get on social media and be so active on it. And I've been following it every day and it has been the most fascinating thing to see happen in real time. Like the Dia's fire post and then the jokes that have been made about it, the newlywed game she's doing with her husband. Like these things that I'm like, 
I just was not expecting this about Gypsy Rose. I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't all of this. Like, I feel like we're just getting, we're getting more than what we bargained for. Um, she recently put out this Instagram post about the haters and I've seen a lot of people making jokes about how the things that she posted we left in 2014. There's just a lot going on in the world of Gypsy Rose Blanchard. I changed my opinion on the Gypsy Rose situation in less than 24 hours. Let's talk about it. I used to stand her and be like, yes, queen, like every single one of you do. I watched the act. I felt so bad for her and she's a hero and a victim and this, that, and the third. Not anymore, babe. Yes, she is a victim. She went through some up stuff that she never should have been through. She deserves to get out of that 100%. However, if you actually do some research and watch her interviews, she's not a good person. She is a master manipulator and she learned by the best one there was, her mother. There's literally an interview where she's like, I learned to be the best liar with no conscience, no remorse, nothing, best manipulator from my mother. She learned all her tricks from her mother. If you watch her videos, anytime they ask about her ex-boyfriend who her mom for her just threw his whole entire life away as life in prison, she's like, can't worry about that. Her PR team is working hard as fuck. She shuts down the conversation about Nick, redirects the question back to herself, and is like, I can't think about that for my healing and my this and my that, you know? Can't worry about him. I don't want to talk about him. Everyone kept saying, well, he has multiple personalities, which is true. He has the IQ of like a 10 year old, which is true. Like all of these things are true, but there's evidence that he kept telling Gypsy, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do it. And she kept insisting that he does. She manipulated him. And I get there were repercussions when she ran away, like being tied to the bed that one time. However, I feel like there were other routes you could have taken. Like you didn't want to speak out at your doctor's appointment or anything like that when you found out you could walk and you weren't allergic to sugar and all of these things. And you might be like, okay, well, Dee Dee was controlling and she would explain it away. She's delusional. She has the brain of a child. She doesn't know what she's talking about. Okay, but she had a laptop though that she was FaceTiming Nick on, going on all these Christian Mingle websites, had a Facebook. You couldn't write a letter to the police department or like anybody in the entire world that this is what's going on and explain my mom is going to say that I don't know what I'm talking about but all of these medical records are fabricated I steal for her I lie for her she's been making me do this I found out I don't have all these issues here's the proof and now the media is glorifying her and she is again yes she is a victim and that's very sad the only reason that she is getting attention is because of her PR team and a shitload of people are making a shitload of money. My fiance explained this to me and literally like switch flipped. Oh my God, that makes so much sense. If you disagree, let's talk about it. Okay, I do not believe that she is just getting all of this attention from her PR team. I think her PR team is trying to put the focus more on her and her husband. I do think that, but I like this story has been huge since it happened and Gypsy and her mom were known before any of this murder happened. They um, were known because of Hurricane Katrina and her daughter supposedly having muscular dystrophy and cancer and all of these medical issues. Like people knew about her. Like I'm very close to where all of this happened, like just within a few hours away from it. People knew about her. It's Mayberry. We're moving to Mayberry. <laughs> It didn't take a lot to convince Dee Dee and her daughter Gypsy Rose to make a new home in Aurora. They already knew it was meant to be. It is the perfect town, the perfect place. I think it was it was a blessing in disguise. It took something like a hurricane to make us have a happy ending. It's amazing. It's amazing the outpouring of love and support. It's beautiful and it's happy and it's full of love. They never ever lost hope. I think they brought hope to everybody else that was down there. This is home to us. We have been wondering for so long and this is finally our home. So it's so good to be here. Yeah. This is Kara Rostelli reporting for KY3's Ozarks Today. This is not huge just because of her PR team. This was a huge story prior to this. Even though I'm making comments that may make it sound like I'm on one side of it, I'm not, I'm in the middle in the sense of, I can believe that I think that what she did 
to her mom was horrible, but I can also sit there and understand that I am not able to comprehend how somebody could get to that point to actually take those actions to do that. So I can only make a comment on how I feel as somebody who wasn't raised that way. And um, I can't understand what she went through and what led her to that. I do feel like you have to be disturbed and have something dark within you to get there. I do believe that. But also that does not mean that I think that she's this completely awful, terrible master manipulator who is going to hurt other people. She served her time and she is now a free woman whether you like it or not, you know? And I definitely have questions and some things, like I don't feel like she's told the whole truth and I feel like she does still lie. But also, you know, she's, she's able to do whatever she wants now. She served her time, she's out, she's free. Um, and everybody's gonna have their opinion one way or the other. She casually said she chained her to a bed. No, like that's absolutely terrifying. I, I am, I will say this, if I had tried to run away and then my mom ended up chaining me to a bed and connecting me to her with a dog leash so that she'd feel every time I moved, I would be so terrified of my mom. I would be scared to say anything to somebody. Like I could see how she would be too scared to talk to anybody. There was a woman that was in the documentary who knew her and her mom prior to the murder happening who said that she herself isn't even convinced that she would have believed her had she told her all of these things had happened because they had her so convinced that she had all these mental issues that she would have questioned Gypsy Rose even telling her that. Um, do I think that it should have ended in murder? Absolutely not. But with all of that being said, I think that um, we don't know if you've never been a victim of Munchausen by proxy or been in a family where you're absolutely terrified of your parent. I don't think that you can judge that side of it, if that makes sense. So glad that people are starting to talk about the negatives of Gypsy Rose having this much attention right now because it's honestly dangerous. Walking out of prison after spending the last eight years isolated, and before that, a life full of trauma, torture, isolation, manipulation, lies. Walking into a life with all this attention, immediate fame, immediate 10 million followers, immediate 8 million followers on Instagram, red carpets, podcasts, news interviews, lifetime specials. This is incredibly dangerous. The reach and the influence that she now has is so dangerous because then we get posts like this girls show my boy some loves in his dms only age appropriate ones though he's only 15 lol heart winky face smiley face completely and totally inappropriate can you imagine the dms that this kid got from the weirdos that just want to be close to her my take on this personally is I think this is a bit of a reach because this is someone who was just released from prison like less than two weeks ago from when I'm filming this video. And um, I do not personally think that this was something that she did knowing that this could be harmful. I don't think that she meant this in a bad way. I don't think she was thinking about the repercussions of her posting her 15 year old nephew on her Instagram. I don't think that any part of her thought, oh, he's gonna get like P words in his DMs and he's gonna get all these crazy people in there. I don't even think she thought that period. She has been in prison. We have to give a little bit of grace with that in the sense that she doesn't know how things have been out here, y'all. Like this internet, the internet has changed so much in a decade. It has changed a lot. I've been doing YouTube since 2015 and from then to now, it's changed a lot. Whatever she was doing on her Christian Mingle websites and whatever internet she knew before today, she's not educated on how dangerous this is yet. Maybe her posting him on there and her seeing the comments opened her eyes a little bit more to it. I don't know, but I do not believe for one second she had bad intentions with this. Um, should she have deleted it? Yes, but I don't think she had bad intentions. I just don't think she knows what she's doing on the internet. I think she's saying too much, sharing too much, posting too much, but I mean, hey, it's her social media. She can do that. She can do whatever she wants on her social media, but I'm just saying in the sense of, like, if she's gonna post like that, she's gonna get attacked for it, but I also think that we need to, like, like I said, use the thinking part of your brain a little bit. Like, she is not, she's not aware of how dangerous the internet is now. She's been in a very different world 
for a long time now from the one that we're in. And I think that this is a bit of a reach. Now, I didn't react to this TikTok in this video, but I wanna show it to you before I talk about some of the facts from the case that I just haven't heard anyone talk about. But let me show this to you first. Kris Jenner works hard, but Gypsy Rose's PR team works harder. Am I the only one noticing the mass manipulation that's going on right now? Am I the only one that sees Gypsy Rose's red flags? Can we not acknowledge that maybe they're making her out to be America's sweetheart because it makes a whole lot of people money? I'm not saying that Gypsy Rose isn't a victim because she absolutely is, but this shit is not black and white. Nothing is black and white. And this is a perfect example of how you guys will take something and run with it before utilizing your critical thinking skills. And I need you to understand that this is coming from somebody who experienced an entire childhood of extreme abuse, who's diagnosed with CPTSD. I don't know about you, but despite everything that I've been through, I still would not be able to stomach being responsible for the murder of anyone or somebody's life sentence in jail. Let's get into all the red flags that I'm talking about. Number one, if she had access to a computer and a phone, you're telling me that she didn't even try to advocate for herself in any other way before plotting the murder of her mother? Nick has multiple mental handicaps. He is autistic, he's diagnosed with other disorders, I believe multiple personality disorder, and he has an IQ of like 27, guys. And despite all of this, Gypsy insisted that he do this. She mailed him the knife, she wouldn't let him enter the home until he was wearing gloves. She manipulated this man into doing her dirty work for her and she was fully aware of what she was doing. And let's not forget that Gypsy was tested and she has no developmental delays. Am I saying that Nick is a good person? No. Do I think that her mother was a good person? Absolutely not. She was also abused and became the abuser, but she still deserved to rot in jail in my opinion. I will be the first to tell you that I learned all my best tricks from my master manipulator of a mother, and I believe Gypsy did too, but I am also highly sensitive to manipulation because of this, and I have had a bad feeling about Gypsy from the start. Do I believe that Gypsy should not be out of jail? No. I honestly don't even think she should have ever been there. I think she should have been in treatment. But what's strange to me is she denied treatment while in prison. Now let's get into present times. Whenever she's asked about Nick, she essentially says that she just needs to worry about herself and she shows zero remorse for being responsible for somebody's life sentence in prison, which is wild to me. She also reminds us over and over again that she didn't actually commit the crime, that it was him, putting all blame on him. And anytime her mother comes up, she reminds us all how much she loves and misses her mother, which is so weird to me because I hate my mother with every fiber of my being. And I understand, like, if you wanted her gone, girl, I just wish you would stand on business because I can't fathom why you would miss her. So is this Stockholm Syndrome or is this her PR team coaching her to say these things to make herself seem more human? And are we forgetting about the Facebook post because there was no remorse there and this shit ain't adding up to me. And then after refusing therapy, she goes on to date so many men and was engaged to somebody else. Now she's married before she even steps out of that jail cell. So it screams to me that she's very unhealed because it is very common for trauma survivors to seek fulfillment in relationships when they are not healed. And we're all over here applauding her for this, which is crazy to me because she doesn't even know what it's like to live with somebody yet. And you're congratulating her on getting married and committing her life to somebody. She doesn't even know who she is at this point. She's never lived in the real world. And these are things you should know before you commit your life to somebody. And then there's this. I highly encourage that you look up this Facebook page. This is somebody that worked closely with Gypsy and her family for years, who is now providing proof of how Gypsy is manipulative and also pointing out the fact that Gypsy is still being exploited, guys. Isn't it interesting that Gypsy's stepmom didn't take interest in her before she saw the dollar signs? I just feel like if we are willing to justify murder for Gypsy, then there are a whole lot of other cases that we should be looking at. Personally, I just feel like there are a lot of other survivors of extreme childhood abuse who didn't make the choice to murder their abuser, and I don't understand why we're not platforming them instead. I just think it's super unhealthy that she went from an abusive home to prison where she received no treatment and then stepped directly out into fame. And this is what we're teaching our children to idolize? It's just weird, guys, it's weird. She is a victim, I hope that she gets the help that she needs, but it's just super weird.
that were idolizing her. So she says in this video that Gypsy insisted Nick wore gloves before he entered the home, but it was actually the other way around. And I've never seen anyone else bring this stuff up. And to be honest, I'm actually shocked about it. So before I show you the text about the gloves, let me give you just a little bit of context. So Gypsy and Nick would role play and they were into BDSM. Now Nick also claimed to have another side of him that he called the evil side or the dark side. And he said that that was the one that would be committing the actual murder on Gypsy's mom. He told Gypsy that when he got to the house that it was going to be his evil side. Gypsy was talking about how she was shaving for him in the bath, painting her nails pink, and gonna wear a nightgown. This was the night before the murder took place. She asked Nick if the evil side was going to do first because that's what she wanted to do first. He then asks if she's letting him in the front door and Gypsy tells Nick, oh, and you may not need to put on gloves because we will sink it, referencing the knife, so that it's never found. And yes, front. He then responds to a question saying, dear, when he R words you, he takes all parts of the body, so he'll most likely do anal to you, hun. Then he says he is still going to put the gloves on deer. She asks if he will put saliva on himself so that she doesn't get traumatized. And he goes on to say that if you obey his evil side, he won't traumatize you. And she says, I'll listen to him, darling. It's go time. Are you ready? No matter what, I'm yours forevermore. Now I'm mentioning this because in the TikTok, the creator says that Gypsy insisted he wore gloves, but this is not true. You see in the texts that Gypsy actually tells him he doesn't have to wear them. I believe that she wanted his fingerprints to be left behind in case they were to get caught. So she suggested him not wearing gloves. And that is way more disturbing and messed up to me than anything else I've been seeing anybody talk about. And then I need to mention this as well. You can see them entering a motel after he killed her mom. Gypsy is seen smiling and laughing if you look really closely. And then the next day she films this video where she sounds perfectly content and happy. Hi. But then things change when they get back to his parents' house where he lives. She says in the docu-series that aired on Lifetime that it wasn't what she expected when she got to his home. He lived with his parents, which she knew about, but it was in a small room and she was judging the appearance of what his room looked like. And she said that she asked herself, did I really trade this life for that one? It looked the equivalent of a 15 year old boy's room with a wrestling comforter on his bed. Reality started to creep in my mind and I had to thought to myself is this really what I traded that life for this life when Gypsy started to regret her decision she got on Nick's computer logged on to her joint Facebook account that she shared with her mom and post a status that says that is dead now when Nick initially showed up at Gypsy's house to commit the murder when Gypsy answered the door he said that exact same phrase. I find it interesting that she quoted him directly in the Facebook post she made and also that she said something to the effect of and I R worded her sweet innocent body. Now this gave the IP address of his computer and linked the authorities right to Nick's house. I believe in my heart that Gypsy realized she wouldn't have the freedom she wanted with Nick so she framed him. I believe she knew that it would track them to his house and that she thought that she could convince them that she had nothing to do with it. Remember that Nick had a lot of mental issues and Gypsy did not. She believed that Nick would stick with their story and protect her, but if he didn't do that, then she never actually committed the murder. She tried to lie to the interrogators at first, but then when she realized that Nick ended up confessing, she freaked and changed her story. I believe that she thought that she would get an accessory to murder charge at the worst of it, but I don't think that she knew that that wasn't in the state of Missouri. And I believe that she set this up in this exact manner so that Nick would be the one locked away for the rest of his life and that she would be the one that is free. And that is exactly how it played out. And now she is famous for it. And this is where I get disturbed. It's at her ability to manipulate a mass amount of people into thinking that she is just just a victim. And no one can see how she has no empathy at all for what she convinced Nick to do. And another reason why I find this messed up is people say, well, she had a horrible childhood. Have you looked up the childhoods of all the serial killers and murders out there? They have all had horrible childhoods. So where do we draw the line? It's not just that. She was a victim of Munchausen by proxy and she felt she had no other way out. So she chose to kill her mom to escape. That's not the story. 
there's more to it. And the extra facts that everyone is ignoring is the part that makes it messed up. So at the end of the day, she served her time and Nick is serving his, but I think that the public is being manipulated to this day because they simply look at the fact that her mom was a terrible, disgusting, vile person and they believe that she deserved to die, which fine, I'm not mad about it. But no one is looking at what she did to Nick who is forgotten behind bars. And I believe that he should be in prison for what he did, hands down. He should be locked up, he's dangerous. He also in interviews afterwards shows no remorse for what he actually did and he still talks about how he's in love with Gypsy. Like he's a very disturbed guy. But I'm still in shock that people don't find it up what she contributed to in order to get him there and that she has no remorse for it and still thinks she's just innocent. And I think it's up that there are many other cases where victims didn't do what Gypsy did, but they aren't getting glorified like she is. It's dark to me and I stand where I stand. Now, do I think that Gypsy Rose is manipulative? Absolutely. I think she can be manipulative. I think that she has a lot to unlearn that she learned from her mom. You cannot be raised by someone like she was and not have a lot of trauma and um, a lot of bad behavior that you need to unlearn. And I do think that I'm not saying she has darkness in her now, but I think that when all this happened, she had to have something disturbed within her in order to commit this crime. But with that being said, it doesn't mean that I don't have sympathy for what she went through, but I think that this is what I think. I think that you can have sympathy for Gypsy Rose Blanchard and what she went through and feel terrible that she had a mom like that. And you can also think that what she, that conspiring to kill her mom was horrific and should not have happened and disturbing and think that, you know, she lies and has some manipulative tendencies. Absolutely, those two things can coexist at once. People on the internet always think you have to be one way or the other. I'm here, I'm in the middle. I think both things are messed up, okay? And I also think that with someone who just got released from prison, I don't think them put, being put up on a pedestal and praised like a celebrity is gonna be good for her mental health, but who am I to judge? I'm just some random girl on YouTube. I just think that, I think we haven't seen the last of this. I think that it's gonna get messier and messier and messier as we see everything unfold. She has a lot of followers and a lot of eyes on her and doesn't really understand how the internet works. It could get bad very quickly. But I think what is compelling to a lot of people is the level of celebrity that she achieved while she was in prison. She had tons of offers to do pornography now, to strip, to make real money in the world because people are interested in her. And of course, there's some perverse angle here that seems to be happening. Beyond that is the fact that while she was in prison, she apparently fell in love and not with her boyfriend that killed her mother. Now she's done with her boyfriend. He's serving life in prison and she has moved on in her life. But what I find interesting is this sort of Oprah rebrand that seems to be happening where the media is maybe perhaps a little too sympathetic to her and her story. This is them almost glamorizing her new relationship. It feels especially hopeful. But you're really together physically for the first time. Yes. Uh, we call it newly together with. What are your plans? Do you want to have children? We've talked about starting a family. We just don't know when at this point. Our lives are pretty hectic right now. So this is your happy Happily ever after, the gal who liked being a princess. It is, yeah. I had to kiss a couple frogs to get to this one. Hands some face. Oh, thank you, baby. Normal. So here is my take on the situation. What happened to Gypsy Rose Blanchard throughout her childhood is abhorrent. It's awful. Talking about Munchausen syndrome full stop is probably a wider conversation that we should be having because as I said, it's the ultimate victim mentality and we are seeing evidence of it everywhere. But just because something bad happens to someone when they are a child does not mean that we should dismiss the obvious signs that there is now something wrong with them when they are an adult. And I think that Gypsy Rose Blanchard shows all of those signs. She, at the age of 23 years old, devised a plan to kill her mother. They didn't have to do that. She already admitted that she was able to see her boyfriend, that she had, was able to sneak out of the house. Why didn't they just devise a plan to go to the police? I don't know that you can come back from something like that. Two decades of sustained psychological abuse. It 
is obviously going to remain to be seen if she can turn her life around. I certainly hope that she does. But I think that people right now are falling in love with the Hollywood narrative, wanting to believe that she's going to skip into the sunset, where to me, it seems like there is something dark there. So I am not a Gypsy Rose Blanchard stan, as everybody else seems to be. The Hulu treatment does not convince me that this is necessarily a good person. And I think that there is probably going to be some trouble with her down the line. I hope I'm wrong. I hope she turns around. I hope she finds God. But something tells me that mm -mm, there's a little something off with this. This is definitely not the end. I think this is actually the beginning of the Gypsy Rose Blanchard story. I just feel like people coming from a complete negative viewpoint, I don't fully agree with that either. And I don't fully agree with the people coming from just a full on, I stand, praise her, she's amazing. Like it's both weird to me. I don't know, where are those of you that are in the middle like me? Where are you guys? I need to hear from you because I feel alone here. This feels like a lonely place to be where I'm looking at both sides and I'm like, this is crazy. Like the Gypsy Rose Blanchard story in 2024 is not what I expected coming into the new year. This whole thing has been nuts. Now, I want to say the internet is just a wild place in general where one minute people can love you and then the next they hate you. And it's, it's a wild place to be. You can be on top of the world one second and the next second people are trying to cancel you, get you banned from the internet. Um, and as I said, at the end of the day, she served her time. She's free to post whatever she wants on social media. Whether you think what she did was messed up or whether you fully support her, Legally, she served her time. You know, now everything is just something worth spectating. But you know, whenever she came out of, got out of prison, I followed her Instagram because I wanted to see updates to be able to do videos on the situation. And when I followed her, she had just over a million followers. The next morning, less than 24 hours later, she had over six million followers. The amount of eyes that are on Gypsy Rose is absolutely baffling to me. Okay, it's it's bigger than I thought it was going to be. I knew it was going to be big. My friend and I were talking about it. Shout out to Joey. She was like, Gypsy Rose is about to get out of prison. Like I knew it was going to be big, but it is bigger than I even thought it could be. Wow. I feel like the amount of attention that she's getting could be dangerous or harmful to her mental health because like, let, let's look at it like this. Okay, prior to the murder happening, she was a victim of Munchausen by proxy. She was in a very traumatic environment, being controlled by her mom, having a childhood that none of us can fully comprehend what she went through. Absolutely horrific, okay? Then she plots the murder of her mom and the murder actually takes place. She's in the home when it happens. She hears the sounds of her mother as this is happening. Even if she was a part of it, that has to do something to you. That has to do something to you on the inside. Like you're obviously, you know, you, you obviously got something going on to even get to that point to begin with, but then afterwards, that's a lot, okay? So then you have that. Then she goes through the trial. Then she's thrown in prison for eight years, which is a whole other world than out here, right? And now she gets out and she's instantly a celebrity with all of these eyes on her, judging everything she says, every move she makes. She said she's getting therapy and I hope she is because she's going to need it because she served her time and now she is a person who is free and um, she is contributing to society by her presence on social media and in this world. And I don't know about you guys, but I want good people out there contributing to the world because we have enough bad, right? So I don't need her to have further trauma because I don't feel like it's gonna end good for anybody. I hope that she's able to get the therapy that she needs going forward because I feel like just being thrown out there to the wolves like this and out on social media with all these people watching everything that you're doing. I don't know if she is fully prepared for that. How could anybody be? Like that is a lot. I could be wrong, I've been wrong before, but I don't think Gypsy is a danger to society. I don't think she's gonna harm anybody else. I think this was like a unique situation, but it doesn't mean that I like praise her for what she did. I think what she did was horrible absolutely horrible and I don't know what has to be going on in your mind to get there. What is your opinion on the Gypsy Rose Blanchard situation, her getting out of prison, the stands and the haters, her being canceled, her being glorified, 
the way she's being presented in the media, her doing a newlywed game with her husband. I don't know. What are your thoughts about this whole situation? It's been a bit weird. And if you are curious to know, I have members and Patreon content and don't cl click off yet because I have videos where I talk about Gypsy Rose over there. I did a video that is fully uncensored over there, ad-free, about the docu-series if you would like to join and watch that. I also have a podcast where I talked a bit about Gypsy Rose prior to me watching the whole docu-series and all this unfolding. So I definitely got more things to say in my next episode, which will be coming out on Thursday. But if you guys would like to join and see my podcast to see extra videos from me that I make on topics that are too disturbing to post publicly, definitely make sure you guys join my Patreon or members content. I will have links down below. Thank you so much for watching this video and give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you in my next one.